<laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone out there in Facebook land. Aw, I'm so excited to uh, be live. I, I haven't gone live in a while. Uh, they've changed some of the analytics. So um, anyway, I'm happy to be here this Friday morning to talk about joy, to laugh for no reason, to mm, give us all permission to let go of some of the heaviness in our bodies and begin to lighten up and to give ourselves permission to mm, release the emotions of survival, re release the um, constriction and the fear and the worry and all of those heavy lower vibrational frequencies. I know that's kind of a woo woo word, but um, I heard it spoken and it feels true when you get into your body and you're, you're meditating and you feel the heaviness of fear and worry and clenching and you just really become present in a mindful way with the body. Ah, <sighs> there's a lot our bodies are holding on to. And it's one of the biggest reasons why I love my laughter practice. <laughs> My body knows how to laugh even when I'm feeling constricted and worried and overwhelmed and even if my body starts to creep up, my eyebrows start to creep up, anxiety starts to kick in, I start holding my breath, I've had enough practice in my body laughing and practicing joyful movements and postures that I start recognizing, oh, it, laughter is a mindfulness practice. So I start recognizing, oh, I'm holding my breath. Oh, oh, I don't, I could just breathe right now. What's going on? I'm worried. I'm activating old neural pathways of fear and worry and disconnection and a lack of support. And none of that is really who I really am. That's not who we are. Fear is a response from our survival brain that says you're in trouble. Things are not okay. Your, your safety is being threatened. But <laughs> I mean, as you can see, my safety is not being threatened, right? And for the most part, the stress, the overwhelm, the trauma, the anxiety, all of the things going on for us that were happening before the pandemic and that just got intensified during this two year period of time, they're just things happening in our minds. There's a fear of the unknown. There's a fear of what happens if I get sick, I won't make it through. It's just fear. It's practiced fear in the body. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I really don't need help practicing fear, right? I need help putting the pause button on fear. Ah. Oh. I need help feeling good, feeling relief. And actually, I, I've had a lot of help. I first started my laughter practice in 2008 because I was in extreme amounts of anxiety and fear and overwhelm. And I knew I needed to laugh and I just didn't know how. And laughter yoga came along and my you know, judgmental mind was like, no, 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 no. And my body was like, oh, please, please. I need something. <laughs> I'm starving. And I was really starving for oxygen because, you know, laughter, it's forced breathing. You've heard me say that before. So I want to invite any of you that feel sparked. I use that word on purpose. Does it spark joy? That's one of my favorite mentors, Marie Kondo. She talks about sparking joy. So if you looked at your emotional and mental landscape right now, do the thoughts and the feelings and the beliefs inside of you, are they sparking joy? Because when I did an inventory, you know, around a year after the pandemic kicked in, when I finally came out of my freeze and recognized like, oh, I've been laughing through this, but I haven't really tended to the emotions and the parts of myself that are feeling constricted and scared and overwhelmed and dysregulated. <sighs> really, I haven't really been breathing fully. <laughs> goodness for my laughter practice because I don't know where my brain would be if I hadn't been laughing fully. And because I've been teaching laughter classes all through the pandemic, but sometimes I'm doing them actually really all the time. I've just been showing up really for myself and other people have joined and we've had a community of everyone laughing together and contributing. 
So I guess first and foremost, I just want to say you are not alone and your feelings of fear and worry and disconnection and isolation and overwhelm and anxiety and helplessness and anything that you are feeling, you are not alone in it. You are not alone. And if you see people out in the social media realm, out in your neighborhood, out in the world who are feeling things that you really want to feel, I am here to tell you, you are not separate from those feelings and those experiences, except in my own experience from two with, with two exceptions. One is we separate ourselves from those feelings because we can't feel them in ourselves. And we think if I can't feel that in myself and they can have that, but I can't feel it in myself, then I must not be able to have that. So I know for me, I had to overcome the thought and the feelings and the beliefs in myself that said, I can't have that, I can't be that, because I was outside of myself. So when we're laughing, we're coming back home right here. We're accessing our breath and our body. And our body, when we're laughing, for no reason at all, of course, laughter exercises, right? There doesn't need to be anything funny for us to be able to laugh. But when we are laughing, we're breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to laugh at myself every time I say that because I forget to breathe because I first started experiencing anxiety when I was five years old and my parents were unfortunately practicing things that you know we don't want our parents to practice they just weren't around a lot I was really a child of neglect and I I felt alone and scared so much of the time. I felt like I needed to take care of things. I felt like I was the one in charge. And that created a lot of patterns of anxiety in my body, habits, habits. So here I am an adult, I'm not a child anymore, but when a similar situation comes in my present moment that all of my internal neurochemistry practiced over here, my body can't tell the difference between then and now. So my body's, <gasps> but my mindfulness, my breathing, my laughter practice, my joy practice reminds me <laughs> I'm not in the past. This is the present moment. I have power here. My body is powerful. My body wants to feel good. It's one of the reasons that my body, when I talk about my experiences, I'm just going to speak for myself. My body gives me anxiety to remind me, oh, I'm feeling afraid right now. Turn within, breathe, connect, practice self-compassion, perhaps a little giggle to get the breath going, to get the positive chemicals flowing, and then tend and befriend. Mm, I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling worried. We connect to those places within us. And we learn how to relate to ourselves on a deeper level. <laughs> and I laugh a lot because I've trained my body to laugh and it lets me breathe and laughter creates more space and it breaks up the stagnant energy and it creates space in my brain. And then I can think, oh, wow, I've been practicing this for 30 years, but does it really spark joy? No, it's a habit. Do I feel worthy and deserving of blah, 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 blah? Well, I guess I could if I wasn't just taking up so much time feeling worried and anxious. <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. <sighs> and then I'm breathing. So one of the reasons I just had to share is I had an experience earlier today where I was really feeling tight. I was feeling worried. I was in a conversation with someone and it was a really old trajectory. It was an old way of me being in myself. And you know, those old ways pop up to be healed, especially when good things start to happen, when new things start to come into our lives, anything unlike the goodness wants to remind you, wait, this is kind of good. I don't know. Do you really want it? It just wants connection in my experience. Those parts of me want connection. They want to learn a new way, but they get really loud and they get really afraid. And all of a sudden <gasps> I'm in the fear with them. <laughs> ah, 
that's when I laugh, when I breathe, when I smile. You can just take a pen. <laughs> because the body does not know the difference between simulated smiling, simulated laughing, and the real thing. The body wants to feel better. The body is wise. And the body will begin to release happy chemicals, even if you're putting a pen between your teeth and forcing yourself to smile. The body says, oh, we're smiling. Okay, happy chemicals. That is the way it happens. We practice. We surrender. We let go. We learn how to feel joy again. We learn how to trust our inner landscape. We practice self-compassion and loving kindness. <laughs> We play. We bring play into it. We activate our right brain and our creativity and our childlike playfulness. We connect with other people in laughter and playfulness. And, and oh, we just begin to release. Okay, so do this with me for a moment. Just move your arms like this and just fling it off. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> all the heaviness, all the worry, all the thoughts, all the feelings. Oh, just let it go. Breathe in and smooth it down. Engaging your smiling muscles one more time. Inhale, lifting your arms up and smoothing it down. Take a hand, place it on your heart. You could put both hands on your heart, maybe one on your cheek. Soften your gaze for a moment and just say, wow, I felt really stressed lately. This is suffering for me. This is really suffering. I'm not alone in this. I know other people out here in Facebook land and out in the world are also suffering. So this isn't just me. <sighs> I know this too shall pass. I know that this is just a moment and it feels like a hard moment and it's going to get easier. But in this moment, it feels hard and that's okay. <sighs> Allowing yourself to feel okay and know that truly you have all the resources. You can say to yourself, I have the resources within me, even if I don't feel them right now, even if I don't know where they are. I can trust the wisdom of my body. I can trust the wisdom of my body. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> very good, very good. Yay! <laughs> and you can begin to learn new habits and new patterns. That's what we're going to be doing in the laughter leader training I have coming up soon, is we're just going to be scooping in the goodness right? We're going to be bathing in the positivity. We're going to be teaching our bodies a new way of responding to external stimuli. And we're also going to be bringing ourselves back home to ourselves because there is so much goodness here. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I get into fight or flight response and I'm perpetually amplified in overstimulated hypervigilance, right? Everything I have to worry and I have to be, blah, blah, blah. that's a dysregulated state. And I forget about, oh, right here, little Carla, she's scared. She needs connection. She needs laughter. She needs some love. She needs some support. So we come back home to ourselves. And my favorite, one of my favorite ways to do it is through laughter yoga. <laughs> So let's just do a couple laughter exercises. This is called anxiety be gone laughter. You just go. <gasps> just let it go. Anxiety gets to be a habit when there's no stress around me right now. And how about a little opening our heart laughter? Take an inhale. Ha, ha, ha. How much joy can you take in? Ha. <laughs> ha. 
It is amazing to me what happens after one laughter exercise for me. I've been doing this since 2008 and I am telling you, as an expert, anxiety holder, fear, whatever you want to call it, I'm un I've been unlearning fear, unlearning worry, unlearning anxiety in my system. So can you imagine what it would be like to be with a group of people? for a whole weekend practicing joy and laughter and deep compassionate connection with your body and mind, practicing joyful mindfulness techniques, just all the different ways that we can give ourselves permission to feel new ways. In a group and even on our own, I call it positive neuroplasticity, right? Mirror neurons. We're watching other people and we're giving ourselves permission. Like, oh my God, I didn't even know that it was okay to just let that go to just put it down. And also what happens is our body forgets. Our body forgets how to feel good. I don't know. I know. It's weird, right? Our body forgets. And so take a deep inhale in. Collecting goodness, collecting goodness from your surroundings. Just imagining all the goodness in the universe, imagining all the good things in your life are just pouring down upon you right now. And let the exhale shh. Saturate your being and now take 30 seconds right now, 30 seconds to build the new neural pathway. Engaging yourself, connecting to your mind and your heart, engaging your smiling muscles and feel good. Practice feeling good for just 30 seconds. That's all it takes to start the flow of well-being and to begin building the neural pathways. Isn't that great? <laughs> we need to practice this right now mm, our planet needs help there's all kinds of things happening for people for communities for our sweet mother earth we're in a crisis mode right now if we can learn how to tend and befriend these orphaned unmetabolized worries and fears and emotions in our bodies and learn how to elevate our emotional state and start learning and practicing how to feel like we're thriving, then we begin to bring more experiences like that into our lives. And laughter yoga is one of the fastest and the most fun ways to do that. <laughs> so if you are interested in more information about that, I'm putting the link in the chat right there on how you can read about it on my website. And just know that whatever your journey is right now, you are perfect exactly the way you are. And that the wisdom within you knows exactly what it's doing. The same wisdom that's beating your heart and breathing your breath knows exactly what it's doing and what it needs for its journey. So as we begin to breathe more, there's more space and we can notice more. We back up from that small dark spot on the wall and we recognize, oh my gosh, there's a big, huge world out here and that I'm being given the people, the situations, the intuitions, and I just didn't see them before. <sighs> so I encourage you to take a nice deep inhale. External sigh, just let the sigh <sighs> be an out loud sigh. <sighs> Release the heaviness, engage your smiling muscles and just soften your gaze for a moment and just let yourself know I can trust myself to take care of myself. I'm learning new ways and new habits and I call forward the people and the situations and the intuitions to connect me to exactly where I need to be with the perfect everything for my highest good, for my next evolutionary step. Mm, yes, yes, yes. So whatever it is for you, let yourself know it's coming to you. It's already here now. And ask it to show itself hundreds of times in case you missed the first 100, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Just trust and begin paying attention. And perhaps take a new path on the way back home. Whether you're walking or bicycling or driving, take a new route. Because you will notice new people, new situations, things you didn't see before, and those are keys. Those are gifts. 
like sparkling little magical fairy dust. Mm. Yay. Love you. Uh, love yourself because you're worth it. And if you're interested in more about my laughter leader training or any of my classes or individual coaching, whatever would feel good for you, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to help. Mm. So much love to you all. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Mwah.